you ever wonder how good those iPhone charging cables are in gas stations? They're like 10 bucks, right? A normal Apple cable straight from the Apple store is gonna be 20 bucks, so $10 less seems like a good idea, doesn't it? Now, I've never really given any thought to the cables that charge my devices because I've actually never lost or broken a cable out of all these years of using iPhones. This video will actually be the very first time I've gone out and bought lightning cables for my iPhones. But the question about cable quality came up after doing my iPhone 8 fast charge scam video, so I decided to uh, find some answers to the questions that I had. Now before I continue, I really want to know what you guys think. Does the quality of the cable matter when it comes to charging your iPhone? Um, if you think yes, give this video a thumbs up. If you think no, then give it a thumbs down. I'm just really curious to know what you guys think because, I, again, I've never given it any thought. So have you voted yet? Vote. Vote on it. Yes for thumbs up. Thumbs down for no. The short answer is yes, and it's taken me using all these cables and charging iPhones with all these cables to come up with that answer. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you the differences between all the lightning charging tests as well as USB-C to lightning cable charging tests. I've got two of those cables. I'm also going to show you seven things to look for when you're looking at a lightning cable. Apparently Apple has all these guidelines and so I'm going to share them with you um, to help you guys figure out if your cables are actually, you know, authentic MiFi cables or not. And last but not least, I'm going to take the worst performing cables and just take them apart to see, you know, what's in them to see if there's any difference. I'm going to warn you, we are going to get up close and personal with some of these lightning cables. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile Reviews A. CA. At Mobile Reviews A, Monty and I base all our reviews and videos on actual usage. So to answer the question, are $10 gas station charging cables any good? Well, the first thing we had to go do was find a gas station charging cable for 10 bucks. Monty then suggested I check out Amazon to see what selection of cables they had, and I decided to spend another 100 bucks on an assortment of cables. In this video, I will be using a Meishion 2.4 amp cable, which costs $5.99, an anchor power line for $10.99, a braided Amazon Basics cable for $12.99, and an old Amazon Basics cable, which I think I paid $12.99 four years ago, the gas station cable that cost 10 bucks, an awesome cable that I got years ago and I don't know where I got it from, and last but not least, actual Apple Lightning cables, two of them. I'm going to be using my very first cable, this beat up monstrosity from my iPhone 5 years, and one from an iPhone 6 or 7. I'm not really sure, but it's maybe a couple years old. For the USB-C to Lightning cables, I have the ESR cable and the standard Apple ones. So I just want to clarify what the MiFi standard is. There's a good chance that you will have seen this logo on a lot of Apple products. And that means that the third party manufacturer has created that product uh, to Apple standard. So Apple's got all these things to say, it has to do this certain thing, it has to look like this before we can say it's an Apple certified product. With lightning cables, what you're doing is just looking for something that says it's a MiFi certified product. Now, you know, manufacturers can lie. And I do remember Apple you know, telling Amazon to take down certain vendors because they weren't actually MiFi certified. But there is a website that you can check to see if the product that you're planning on buying is actually MiFi certified by Apple. For the charge test, the first run involves seeing how much power the iPhone 8 got from various cables using the same plug and plug-in. I would drain the iPhone while leaving it on the game More Fight, and then I would plug it into the one amp charger that came with the iPhone 8 and set a 30 minute timer. After that, I would record the charge and proceed to drain the battery again. I did this for all the cables, and here's a pretty little graph with all the results. Now it looks like the only two products that aren't MiFi certified were the ones that performed the poorest. The gas station cable and the Meishan cable were the only two that I have in my collection that weren't MiFi certified. Every other cable filled the iPhone at approximately 27 to 28% in 30 minutes. Now personally, I was very surprised to find my old iPhone 5 cable performing as well as it did because it just looks so beat up. So if you're wondering if the age of the cable um, matters, well, I guess it doesn't. The Meishan cable provided a charge of 23%, while the gas station cable didn't even get you out of low power mode in 30 minutes. Now, I thought the poor performing Meishan cable could be explained by the two-in-one head that it came with, but the Thanotech cable also has the same feature and provided the same charge as every other MiFi certified cable. Now, with the USB-C cables, I have this ESR cable as well as the standard Apple one. And as we saw in the fast charge scam video, we know that the full Apple setup provided my iPhone 8 Plus with a charge of almost 60%. I did the charge test again in 8 
gave me about 55%. The ESR cable uh, provided the iPhone 8 Plus with only 41% charge. That's almost a 20% difference. In fact, charging with the 29 watt charger and the ESR cable did no better than charging with a smaller Anchor 4 port charger and a regular lightning cable. So the quality of the cable does matter, but I will get into the detail of that ESR cable in a, in, in a second. At the time of the video, I couldn't find any other USB-C to lightning cables on my Amazon store, so it's kind of bad news for all those thinking that you can go with a cheaper cable for the iPhone 8's fast charge. For the next round of lightning cable charge tests, I measured the charge every 10 minutes from dead to full. I only went with three cables, a standard Apple cable, the gas station cable, and the Meishan cable. Here's a pretty graph of the differences. So looking at this graph, there's actually a big difference in terms of how long it will take your iPhone to charge between the different types of cables. Again, one is MiFi certified, well the Apple one, and the other two are not. So over a span of one year, going with a certified cable versus the gas station cable is going to save you 300 hours of charging, assuming that you charge your phone once a day. Surely that might be worth the cost difference between the really cheap $10 gas station uh, cable and an authentic Apple one like this one. 10 bucks, 300 hours, that's a pretty good deal. Here's the extra tip website thing I mentioned earlier. If you're unsure if the product you bought is actually a MiFi certified product, use the Apple's MiFi tool to see if the vendor and product is listed in their database. I'm sure that the MiFi program is the bane to most manufacturer, but it's pretty smart on Apple's behalf because it ensures that certified products meet their usability requirements. Now this makes sense to me because Apple wants to kind of control the entire usability experience. So it would be very bad press uh, for people to say, hey, I got this brand new iPhone 8 Plus, but it charges incredibly slowly because I'm using this third-party crappy cable. Apple doesn't want that. Now going back to the ESR cable, this USB-C to lightning cable is not listed in the MiFi database, but the Anchor power line is. This makes sense for the ESR cable since it didn't charge the iPhone as quickly, and despite it saying it is compatible with the MacBook on Amazon, the footnotes do indicate the cable is not MiFi approved since Apple hasn't released the USB-PD standards yet. This ESR cable is only rated to 12 watts, so plugging it into the 29 watt charger, I don't think it did anything. 12 watts, that's what, two point something amps, I think, which is kind of equivalent to the Anchor four part uh, charger that we used uh, in the fast charge video. So I guess the math does kind of work, make sense. So sorry guys, you can't go cheap with the uh, USB-C to the USB-C the lightning cable for your iPhone 8 fast charge. Boo irons, Apple. Now, if you found this video useful, do share it with your friends or your family, especially the ones who gawk at the cost of Apple accessories, because as we're finding out now, it does make a difference between having an Apple certified product and a gas station ca uh, cable. So the next question I had was, what's the physical difference between a non-MiFi cable and a MiFi cable? Now, I know that when the lightning cable first came out, Apple required an authentication chip to be installed on the connector, but none of these cables that I used in this video that suck, the gas station, one and the Meishan one didn't result in a this accessory isn't supported prompt that I used to see a lot with iPhone 5 and iPhone 6 battery cases. So there's actually two parts in answering the question what's the difference between a non-MiFi and MiFi uh, certified product with the first one being a support document that Apple released I don't know when but I accidentally stumbled upon it that shows us what to look for uh, when it comes to fake products and the second part is me just taking the cables apart just to see you know is there a difference? Do they look different? Are they crappy? Colorful? I don't know. We'll find out. Now for lightning cables, there are seven telltale signs that Apple wants you to look at when it comes to detecting bad products. But do kind of take it with a grain of salt because even this Anchor Powerline uh, cable, which is MiFi certified, doesn't fulfill every one of these criteria. Now the first four deal with the USB head, with the next three dealing with the lightning head. The lightning head led to the most differences. The first sign to look at is the interlocks on the USB head. Apple certified MiFi cables are supposed to have trapezoidal equally spaced interlocks from the edge. Looking at this picture here, the gas station cable definitely doesn't have that and the anchor cable looks close but I don't think they're equal. The Meishan cable is actually quite close and I will add that throughout this entire process the Meishan cable actually looks very close to a certified product. The second sign is to look at the USB contacts on the inside of the head. The standard is well everything's supposed to be gold. Fake ones apparently are silver but every cable in this photo has gold contacts so you know on to the next criteria, I guess. The third sign deals with the finish of the USB head. Now between these four cables, the two that are MiFi certified have a much smoother finish to the USB head. You'll also see that the head of the gas station cable is actually bent, whereas every other cable isn't. It almost looks like somebody crimped this uh, cable by hand, whereas in the other ones were machine stamped. But I didn't notice this defect, we'll say, when I was spending $10 at the gas station with this cable. 
The fourth sign is to look at the surface of the insulator on the inside of the uh, USB head. Basically, the back of the inside of the MiFi USB head should be completely flat. The grain of salt that I was talking about with the Anchor power line uh, can be visible here because, well, it's not completely found on the back of that USB head. The only other one that matches this fail criteria is our wonderful gas station cable. Now, the fifth sign is to look at the head of the lightning cable. The real cable is supposed to be made from a single piece with a head that's smooth, rounded with smooth contacts. Fake ones are made from more than one piece, have a rough and consistent finish, and have squared contacts with an uneven surface. So if we look at the photos of the different cables closely, you can definitely see that the gas station cable is made from two pieces. The connections are not the same size, and the quality of the material in the head is actually quite poor. The Meishan cable looks a little better as the connection points are generally the same size, but they're not smooth. The quality of the head is also noticeably worse than the standard iPhone one. The Anchor Powerline cable looks almost identical to the Apple one. The sixth telltale sign was to look at the size of the boot. Now this is again one of the requirements that you may take with a grain of salt. Certified products are supposed to have a consistent boot size of 7.7 millimeters by 12 millimeters. So the Meishan and gas station cable failed this test. By that logic, then the Thanos thick cable, the awesome cable, and the old Amazon basics cable would fail this part of the MiFi certification as well. <laughs> Apple basically realized that the size of the head doesn't matter as much, I'm guessing. The seventh telltale sign is the color of the faceplate insert. According to Apple, the fake ones are white or black, but every one that I had was gray metallic, so this one, eh, kind of useless in terms of criteria with all the cables that I have. So the second part of the question, what are the physical differences between a MiFi product and a non-MiFi product? Well, I went and took apart four cables. I went and took apart the gas station cable, the Meishan 2-in-1 cable, and this actually kind of still works because, well, the 2-in-1 is now just a 1-in-1, uh, as well as a regular lightning cable by Apple. And last but not least, I decided to chop off the head off of the Anchor Powerline cable as well. Now, as I mentioned before, I really wanted to see if the authentication chip was still there. But what I discovered made me feel way more comfortable in saying that you should stay away from non-MiFi certified cables. For the next few minutes, I want you to keep this question in mind. What would happen if something bad was to happen to each lightning cable? You know, like if the chip failed and there was a spark and something caught on fire. The first cable I took apart was the gas station cable. Two cuts along the side and I was able to pull the plastic off the head. In the process of taking it apart, one of the chips actually came off the circuit board. So that's probably an indication of just, you know, on top of the really crappy build quality that we saw a few minutes ago, just how poorly built the cable is. You know, two slits, you cut across, you pull the, pull the head off and the chip falls off. The second cable was the Meishan cable and that was a little tougher to deal with because of the aluminum outer cover. In order for me to get through it all, I had to dremel the cover off. Now, once the cover off, the plastic, well, two slits, and it just pulled right off, just like the gas station cable. Though the circuits did stay, or the chips did stay on the circuit board instead of being pulled off this time. Now, the two non-MiFi certified cables look quite similar. There's only two chips on the circuit board for the lightning head. But going back to that question, if something bad was to happen, well, it's just the chip and then some plastic that you can easily melt. Now, at this point, I thought, hey, taking the lightning cables was going to be very, very easy. That was until I tried to take apart the, uh, oh, the lightning cable head by Apple. This one was really painful to do. The outer boot was made from hard plastic, so even getting that off was kind of a spectacle on its own. The white boot then exposed the metal shell, which was pretty much impregnable until I used my Dremel to grind off a piece of the shell. Now, once I was able to pry the shell off, I found that the circuit board was covered in glue, and what looks like the white covering on the cable actually gets injected into the head as well. Now, I removed the glue and found that there was another layer of glue on top of the circuit board, and no amount of prodding on my behalf could remove that glue. This took so much more effort to take apart than the gas station cable. Probably this took about 10 minutes. This took me over an hour to get it to this point because it just, I didn't know how to take it apart. Everything was just so glued and so tightly wrapped together. So it just goes back to that build quality. Sure, it's $10 more, but it's way tougher to take apart. Those were all the cables I was going to take apart, but one of the things I kind of realized was I, would, I needed to see what a non-Apple MiFi cable looked like, so I decided to destroy this uh, Anchor Powerline cable, and it's kind of sad because I really like this Anchor Powerline cable. But one of the things I want to reiterate was I said that two out of seven things failed because of the USB head as well as the lightning boot being too big. So keep that in mind on top of the, uh, will, this ca will this cable start on fire? So taking the plastic that covered the cable was actually quite easy. It was almost as easy as the gas station cable as all I had to do was just cut two slits and kind of pull everything off. 
It was a little more difficult because the head was much bigger, but once the plastic was removed, it exposed the uh, metal shell covering the circuit board, which exact looked exactly like the Apple cable. Now I'm guessing it's actually this boot that Apple's looking for during the MiFi certification process and not the outside boots that they show on their support document. Once again, I had to dremel the shell off and this was actually easier to take off. I think the metal plating was a little thinner. Like the Apple cable, I did find a ton of glue over the circuit board. Luckily, there was only one layer of glue which I was able to easily take off the circuit board. And as you can see, the exposed circuit board has a lot more chips than the non-MiFi cables. Now I can't speak to anything about the chips on the different cables, but there's two on a non-MiFi cable and there's about six on this anchor power line. So I doubt that the cheap company had gone and made the chips smaller and combined them all into one. <laughs> I really doubt that's the case here. Taking apart the anchor power line took about 30, 40 minutes, mostly because it wasn't as tough as this Apple lightning cable. But I will say that both of the actual lightning heads, the, the piece that goes into your iPhone, those came off these cables, mostly because it took a lot of effort to pry off those metal shells with the pliers. And I'm guessing there's, I just crushed it and just pulled them both off. So again, the certified products are much harder to take apart. The certified products have many more layers. Like the Apple has like one layer of glue, second layer of glue, metal boots, hard plastic boots. Same with the Anchor. Well, Anchor has one level layer of glue, metal boot, plastic. Whereas in the other two, well, just plastic or glue. Like nothing was hard about taking these products apart. So the cables that look poorly built and are poorly built, the gas station cable and the Meishan cable, they both charge your iPhones much slower. In the instance where the gas station cables compare to your normal MiFi cables, that's 300 hours worth of charging time that you're gonna save between the two products. And well, the Anchor power line and this gas station cable cost the same amount. Uh, the Apple cable is about $10 more. So, you know, you gotta ask yourself, for 300 hours worth of charging time, better safety, I would say, you know, less bad things happening with this. Is it worth the $10? And in my opinion, yeah, it absolutely is. So if you're planning on getting any new cables or any sort of new products uh, for your iPhones, consider going through my links. The links are right now coded for, uh, for cables, but the moment you get to Amazon, anything you buy through Amazon uh, using my link, I'll get credit for. None of these companies decide to sponsor this video, and this is probably one of the longest videos I've ever done. Like, I, I had to shoot it in two parts. You know, the shirt's different, Monty's tie's different. Ooh, this was a doozy of a video, wasn't it, buddy? All right, now we gotta go edit it. Thanks for watching.